Okay, we're getting started. So hi to everyone who's joined us. I'm sure there's going to be a few more coming along. Uh, welcome to our class. And tonight we're showing the highlights of the TM6, the modes and the functions. We're going through as many as we can because there's quite a few of them. So they're all gonna get a mention at some time, but uh, some of them we're gonna cover uh, in detail and go through some recipes too. So I'm, I'm not actually cooking. Well, I am, I've already cooked. So I'm going to just share a little bit about what I've uh, done today. Uh, a couple of them are pretty significant at the moment. So I'm just gonna turn my computer that way so you can see what's going on in my kitchen. And my name's Bev, by the way, I'm the team leader for a fabulous team. We're called Team Blitzit because that's what we get up to with our thermomix. We, we blitz it in a whole lot of different ways. Okay, so what I would like to share with you is just a couple of things. So one of them is uh, fermentation mode. Uh, that's one of the modes on the TM6 that will allow us to make yogurt. So that's not saying any other thermomix can't make yogurt, but this is a way of making yogurt that's uh, very useful because you can, you know, set it up, uh, you, you warm up the milk, there's different processes, you follow the steps uh, and leave it to make overnight. Uh, I did actually make one of the yogurt recipes yesterday in these beautiful little um, glass jars that it's just a vanilla yogurt and I've put some beautiful uh, fruit topping you get eight of these little jars in a box in our big shop and the Varoma is designed to fit eight of them. And the recipe is also designed to fill up eight of these bottles. The yogurt is amazing, it's very tasty. So I did get into that yesterday and I did start it a little bit too late. So poor Jeff, my husband had to wait up uh, till 10 to 12. So I'm going to program that a little bit better. So when you do make it yourself, uh, make sure that you get it started. So it's not going to keep someone up or get someone uh, up early. So what I am doing right now is uh, I'm in the middle of making another batch of yogurt uh, using fermentation mode. And I'm actually using this beautiful white thermo server that has been designed exactly to fit inside the Varoma. So at the stage of the recipe I'm up to, I'm waiting for the milk that I've warmed up to reduce itself down to uh, 45 degrees. It's sitting at 70 at the moment, so I'm gonna just keep an eye on it. Then there's a couple of things that need to be added. And one of them is a pot set yogurt. Uh, I usually buy um, this little tub. It's uh, Farmers Union. It needs to have pot set on it um, because it's the right, bacteria in there for a yogurt. So I'm going to pop a bit of yogurt in, uh, a little bit of milk powder, tiny bit of sugar, and off I go for cooking this for 10 hours. And tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have a beautiful tub of yogurt ready to pop in the fridge and have throughout the week. So it's a very cost-effective way to make yogurt and very tasty as well. I had a little taste of one of these this afternoon, and absolutely delicious, really creamy, thick, beautiful yogurt. And in fact, you can use part of that yogurt to make the next batch. Uh, so, you know, you just need milk and a couple ingredients and you've got yogurt happening. Um, another thing I just wanted to show off, I asked the consultants whether I should or not. We're doing a bit of focus this week on using the Varoma. Uh, so this afternoon I made this beautiful dish that I've made many times before. It's a lovely piece of salmon, about a kilo. And the recipe is called um, salmon with yogurt topping. It used to also be called with walnut crumble because that's what it has on top. But it's absolutely a Christmas dinner worthy recipe. Easter, we've got Easter coming up or any time when you want to have a really special dinner. I can highly recommend this one. In, in the email that follows this class tomorrow, I will pop this recipe in so that you can find it but I highly recommend that you make it, it's beautiful. We buy whole salmon and we kind of chop it up and keep a kilo of it to make this recipe always. Okay, so um, one more thing, two actually. One of them is 
this at this point in time, if anyone is thinking of purchasing a TM6, we have an amazing offer, which one of them is you will get this lovely silicon bread mat that's got great circles that you can use for measurement. And the other is our very heavy duty bread tin that I currently have in the oven baking a beautiful loaf of bread. So I'm gonna show you that bread a little bit later on and show you the tin. But both of those come with the Thermomix at the moment and they're very popular and very awesome. They work well. Finally, two minutes I'm gonna take now. I'm going to just bookmark my recipe because I can move across to, um, to Cookie Do on the TM6. I've actually named myself, I'm Hello Thermo Queen, what would you like to cook today? So you have the, you are able to do that. You can call yourself whatever you like. And I've moved myself up to be a, a Thermo Queen. I've been around for 10 years and I think I've earned the Queen status. Um, but what I wanted to show you, if you go into search, um, I'm just showing you where I found these yogurt recipes because the modes have names and most of them have recipes to match. So when you go over to Cookie Doo and drop down the word recipes and go to collections, that's where you're gonna find groups of recipes that cover different modes. So the collection that I've made, the uh, yogurt in this and the yogurt in these are both in a collection called fermentation in a TM6. So if I typed in the word fermentation, it's gonna bring up collections of recipes using that mode that are gonna support the mode and allow me to cook. So that's about it for now. Um, the, we're all giving you a tip today on Cookie Do 3.0. So each of us will give you that as we go through and thank you to all the consultants that are jumping on to, to support this class tonight. So my tip is Cookie Do 3.0 will allow you to pull out a beautiful little recipe box. This was my mum's. It's full of amazing, great recipes that she used to make. Uh, and these are a couple. My sister gave me this Dayton Walnut recipe in the 70s. And this came out of Women's Weekly in the 80s. And these are all my favourite recipes I've been cooking forever. So now I'm able to put them onto Cookie Do, uh, uh, sorry, into the recipe community, then upload them to my Thermomix. So if uh, very simply, if I go into, um, where are we, sorry, into uh, my recipes, and then I go to created recipes, it will bring up all the recipes that I have moved across onto my Thermomix, step by step by step. So that's been a huge highlight for me, not to be having to look at a recipe and then going back and looking across, going back. It's step by step and it's easily done. So that's all from, from me for now. So I'd like you to now uh, enjoy Nadine. Nadine is going to um, go through some amazing uh, high heat. That's a great function of the TM6. So I'm going to move you across to Nadine now to her kitchen and she's going to give you some really great cooking using high heat. Thanks so, Bev and welcome hey. to my kitchen. Um, today we're going to utilize the high heat function and show caramelized onion. So I've got that on the screen ready to go. So we'll start cooking. We're going to add in 20 grams of oil. bit too much, we'll take a bit out. The high heat function, um, you need to follow the guided cooking recipes because um, it does have safety features built into it. And we're going to add four to 500 grams of onion that is just uh, chopped into wedges. And we're going to use the splash guard. So this is part of the TM6, this is the splash guard. And you just select done when you've added that on. And then you turn the dial and it will start cooking for you. So this will be 20 minutes of cooking. And I will come back and show you later on 
the uh, end result. And my tip on Cookie Do 3.0 is it's great working with my customers to add their favorite recipes onto the recipe community. I've added uh, Anne's favorite chocolate cake. It's one that I'd highly recommend. It's my new favorite chocolate cake. And um, it's great to see that it's electronic now rather than a paper version. And I can share it with all my friends for them to make it as well. So thank you and over to you, Kathy. Thanks, Nadine. Thanks. Got Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, can you hear me? I am talking about the egg mode today, which is one of my favorite modes. It's really, really simple, um, but it basically gives you perfectly cooked boiled eggs in a few minutes. And I just love popping them in in the morning when I get up. And I know it's going to ding when my eggs are perfectly cooked. Um, and I can go about making coffee and toast and whatever else needs to be done. Um, but the other great thing about it is the same function will also cook perfectly good poached chicken. Um, for sandwiches or whatever else you might need poached chicken for. So today I've got some eggs that I'm going to do, but I've also got some thigh fillets. Um, some people like breast fillets. Um, I personally always use thigh fillets because I just think they have more flavour. Um, but the people wonder how you cook eggs in a thermomix because they assume that the blades are always going. But um, the TM6 actually allows um, the cooking to happen without the blades moving. So you're basically using it almost as a pot, but because it's very heat controlled, it allows you to get your eggs always perfectly as you want them. So I'll just quickly show you. So it's called egg boiler mode. Um, it's probably hard to see on the screen. I'll just, I'll just bring it down. No. <laughs> I don't think that's helpful either. Um, but basically it has soft, medium, soft, medium, medium, hard and hard. And all you have to do is put your eggs in the pot that's straight out of the fridge. Don't, um, it doesn't work perfectly well with room temperature eggs, so they really should be um, cold out of the fridge. And you just fill with cold water up to the first little line there, so it's about a litre of water. Thereabouts. Basically, as long as your eggs are covered, it'll, it'll do the job. Um, and then you Put your lid on and then you select whether you want what how you want your eggs cooked um but before i get that started because everybody doesn't want to watch <laughs> the eggs cooking for um 10 or 12 minutes i'm just going to tell you a little bit about the cookie do and what i like about it so created recipes um some recipes I've put in myself and some I've brought over from recipe community. Um, I guess my tip with it is people just think it's an automatic process, like press the button, it brings the recipe over. Yes, it does. But you actually need to do a little bit of work to make it, to separate the steps up and to add the cooking functions and the weighing functions. So if you're using it for the first time, I would really recommend a little sitting down like on a Sunday afternoon or sometime when you have a bit of time um, and just focusing on it and just figuring out the process. Like it's not hard, but it is a little bit of a process um, and just something that you, you need to learn to make sure your recipe is in correctly and ready to use step by step in a guided cooking way, you know, as the other Thermomix recipes are on the TN6. So, um, I just don't want people to freak out when they bring a recipe across from recipe community and go, oh, that looks really weird. It does look weird because it doesn't come across 
perfectly step by step. It just comes across in a bit of a rough form. Um, so just take a bit of time. And once you've done a couple of recipes, it becomes quite easy. But the first couple, you do have to put your thinking cap on and concentrate on what you're doing um, just to get it um, right. Because once it's in there, it's right. But just take your time and um, make sure your steps are correct. So I'm going to get my egg boiler mode happening. Um, and I'm also going to cook some chicken thigh fillets. And at the end, I'm going to come back and show you how to shred your chicken and make some lovely um, cooked mayonnaise chicken ready to go for your sandwiches or for your salad, literally in a few seconds. So um, I'll be back. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks. I just wanted to say that we're all giving a few tips about Cookie Do 3.0, but we do have an amazing recording that um, thanks to Mel Meeks, who you're going to meet in a short while, she has put a, an amazing recording together. And I thought rather than play it tonight, I'll include it in the email that you'll receive tomorrow so that you can use it as a resource and go step by step, pause it, do that, do this. It's, it just makes it a whole lot easier than just watching it. Uh, in one go. But thanks, Kathy. So let's move on to DeRay. Uh, can you spotlight DeRay for me, um, Bernie? I can't see her. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Hi. So I'm DeRay. I am a mum of three, and I am going to cook something quickly for you guys. Um, this is one of my own personal recipes and I uploaded it onto Recipe Community when I first became a consultant. Um, it's a, it's like a Turkish tabbouleh, it's called a kusur. And what it is, is I've just uploaded it. I know, um, sorry, excuse my hand, but um, I've just uploaded it using my mobile phone. It was just really quick kind of upload. And it appears as Bev said on your created recipes page. So you just kind of scroll down, as you can see, I've got quite a bit. I do love recipe community. I think it's great. It's got some great stuff on there. Um, and you just click on the one that you want. And all you have to do is you start cooking. And it's so simple. I actually thought it was going to be harder than what it is. It literally still takes you step by step, but it gives you the option of kind of using your scale. So if I go to my scales, it'll give me all of my ingredients and it's brought up my scales for me. I don't know if everyone can see that. Uh, it's probably a little bit hard to see. Um, but yeah, so it basically brings up my scales and it also gives me a list of ingredients on the left-hand side. So what I'm gonna do now is I've already done the beginning part of my recipe. So I've added water, tomato, paprika paste, and salt into my bowl, and I've um, heated it for five minutes on 100 degrees. Um, the next step is you add your bulgur, which is this stuff here, which is the stuff you make to bully out of. Now, um, there's two types that you can buy. One is fine and one is coarse, and you can buy it from your local Coles, as I found out. So I hope you all can see that, but it's really simple to find. It's in your, I think it's in the international food section or something like that. So once you've added that, you combine it, and then you pop it aside to cool. Um, once you've popped it aside, it's now telling me to add cucumber, carrot, red capsicum, and tomato into the bowl. So if I hit my scales, it tells me exactly how much I need of what. So we've got cucumbers. Carrots. Capsicums. That as much as you like. I like capsicum. My kids don't, but that's all right. And then once you've got it all, it says in um, you mix it 10 seconds on speed four. So here we go. You just hit your little um, mixer button and it's 10 seconds on speed four. And that's just going to take a lot. Okay, 
So now that that's done, we'll just go to the next step. Okay, so it's just chopped it all up for me. And I'm just gonna add that all into the bowl as it suggested. Now, I think when I uploaded these, I might have deleted a recipe, but uh, the first part by accident. And the first part is pretty much sauteing onions. So I think Nadine's got that part covered. So all I need to add to this is sauteed onions that I'm done. So I've added everything in. So the other thing that I need to add is mint, paprika, black pepper, and the juice of a lemon. So if I just add a half a teaspoon of each of those, and some chili and I have my dessert and it's really simple so it just basically takes you step by step you just need to make sure you up make sure you upload all the parts of the ingredients that you need and that's it great Duray, thank you I'm going to try that never tried it before but now I know that it exists I need to just make sure I I'll do the sauteing onions and show you guys at the end <laughs> Okay, so you're done for now. We'll come back yep. to you. Yes, just come back to me at the end. All right, so we're now moving to Mel Meeks. So if, uh, Bernie, you can um, spotlight. We're all going to discover the blade cover peeler. Everybody's talking about it, and Mel's going to show us how it works. Thank okay. you, Mel. Hi guys, um, so this is the blade cover peeler. Now it fits the TM5 and the TM6, but it wasn't, it won't go on the TM31. Um, so as the name suggests, it's a blade cover. So it replaces the old gray um, blade cover, but it has an additional function and it works as a peeler as well. Okay, so they um, have done quite a few tests for you today so it's mainly recommended for root vegetables um there's a few people floating around on facebook that have tried it with eggs i tried three batches today and they all smush but i had lovely like um a nice egg sandwich today with all the smushed egg it's up to you whether you want to try that one or there's a little finicky technique with eggs just trying to get that membrane to separate i tried a whole heap of different techniques but i got none that worked for you so you can try that one on your own but let me show you what I did. So when you get the, the blade cover, you get a manual with it. And it says that you should get um, your size vegetables should fit through the hole in the lid. So that gives you a rough guide as to the size. Um, I'm going to be doing some potatoes in a little bit. And these ones I pulled out from my garden. They are the perfect size. They work wonderfully. Um, I did try some potatoes today that um, I just got some nice big ones and I just cut it in half just to test them out and to see how they would go because they weren't going to be nice little round balls. Um, but they worked perfectly. They did really well. Um, I ended up um, just steaming them. In, I, only, I only did two potatoes, so I actually had um, my, my simmer basket in because I only had a couple of potatoes. So I steamed them in here first. Then I sprayed them with oil um, and I made up some, some roast potato seasoning with some like ground rice and rosemary and garlic, um, some dry garlic and, and just sprinkled that on my, on my potatoes and just chucked them in the air fryer with just a little bit of spray of oil. If you're someone that likes really nice um, succulent potatoes you can douse them in some duck fat or something like that but um, it actually worked really well because when you use the blade cover it roughs up the edges which actually works really well for roast potatoes um, so some of the things I also tried I tried sweet potato um, it didn't work so well I have to say the um, the skin it just it didn't quite come off so well so that was that one was a no for me the carrots, the carrots worked well. I just got some nice little um, sort of rough edges. If you like your carrots with a nice, clean, crisp um, peel, I'd probably still do it with a peeler. Um, but if you are, you know, just going to be um, doing them for a baked dinner or something like that, that would be perfect. 
I also did some beetroot. Now I have done beetroot before from beetroots from my garden. So I could choose the size they were. So I picked, I picked them, um, you know, when they were about this size, I had some nice baby beets and they peeled perfectly, nice crisp beets. Now I got a beet from the shop today um, and it was a huge one. So I cut it into quarters, um, but it was a little bit soft. So the skin didn't quite peel all that well. There's still a little bit of a layer here of skin. I actually put it on blade peeler twice. So that's about eight minutes of peeling. Um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best. The, the best that I had with the, with the um, beetroot was fresh, crisp beet straight from the garden and a nice small little round parcel. But it did give me some really nice um, pink um, water to, to use. So what I ended up doing was made pickling liquid out of the, um, out of the nice beetroot water. So I added some uh, apple cider vinegar, um, a few different bits and pieces, and that is going to be pickling some eggs. Um, a couple of those eggs look okay. The rest are a little bit smushed, but that's okay. Um, there is a recipe on Cookie Do. I'll just go into my week. And is a beetroot and avocado eggs. So this is the recipe where I actually got the idea of pickling and not wasting all that beautiful um, beet water um, and just using it to pickle my eggs. So there's a recipe on there to, um, to do your eggs and to, to pickle those. Um, when you do your potatoes, when you do your veggies, um, you end up using about 600 mils of water um, in the bottom of the blade. So you just pop the, the blade cover over the top of your blades. It just clicks in. And then you add 600 mils of water, which is basically just so it covers the blade. Um, and then you don't really want to waste all that beautiful water. It's got a lot of nutrients from the skin. Um, if you're someone that likes to remove um, that skin. However, as I said, there's a lot of nutrients in that skin. So we often will, will, won't peel things. But there's things that do need to be peeled. Um, so, you know, you're welcome to, um, yeah, to use your, your peeler for that. But that water I ended up using on my garden and just getting all those nutrients back into the garden. Um, so what I'm going to do now is also show you one of the best things that, are, um, that I've discovered recently is that you can peel garlic. So I grabbed a whole clove. Now I did a test run today and I did a whole clove and I left the ends on half and I cut the ends off half just to test what would actually work better and I found that the, the ends that cut off they actually peeled a lot quicker um, the others just needed to be put back on for like another minute or so um, to, to peel so I'm going to do that one now for you it only takes like 10 seconds so I'm just going to chuck the whole clove in the little ones don't peel as well as the big ones but they still um, got there at the end so when you're using the blade cover, if it's in the normal forward rotation, just like your blades, like forward is chop and backwards is stir, same situation. Um, when you're using your blade peeler, forwards is going to use the peeling action, um, whereas when it's in reverse is when you can slow cook and sous vide with it and it only goes to speed one sort of in reverse, a maximum of speed four um, when you're going in the, in the clockwise motion, so in that chopping motion. So let's just get out of this. I'm just going to do 10 seconds and I'm going to go speed four. Uh, you can see here. So what I've done previously is just pull out the pull out the skins. If any of them at this stage uh, are peeled, pretty much that one's just got like just one little flex still on it. But if they peel, then I've actually pulled them out because I don't want them to get um, sort of over um, overdone. So just pull out the ones that are done, and then. You can just pop it back on for another 10 seconds. So it's always better to underdo it and put it back on than to overdo it. So for whatever it is you're doing, like potatoes, whatever, um, these potatoes here, these nice little um, 
white skin was, I don't know the name of them, there's so many names of potatoes. Um, the peel function is set for an automatic four minutes, but I actually found that three minutes is better for these. So it's better to go under and then have a look at them and put it back on if you need to. We'll just go that, we'll just go a few more seconds on that one. Can I just show my bread coming out of the oh, oven? <laughs> Can you spotlight me, Bernie, please? Thank you. Bernie? Uh, okay, just very quickly, I just want to show you the bread coming out of the oven in our beautiful bread tin. Now, if you let it prove uh, a little bit too long, which I did today, uh, I couldn't use my top to make it a square loaf, so I had to make it a high rise. So here's my um, bread coming out. Perfect. You should smell this bread. It's amazing. And you don't need to grease this quality tin. It just doesn't need it. Now, the recipe says that you can pop it back in to crisp all sides. So actually, that's what I did when I made it the other day, and it was amazing. So it's going back in the oven for about two to three minutes, and then it's done. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to show you my, my bread. Okay. Bernie, can you put it back to me? I'm not going to touch my computer. I've got garlic hands. <laughs> all right. So I've got most of them all peeled now. So we have... Um, just a couple that have just a few little remnants. You can put it back on until you're happy with it or you can do those little ones by hand. But for the most part, um, it's all pretty much come off. So I've just got just a few skins in there. Okay, I'm just gonna leave those skins in there, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna jump on and um, do some peeled potatoes for you. So. The, as I said, this is um, you can use this for a TM5 and a TM6. So if you don't have the TM6 peeler function, you can just you can just set it manually by hand. Okay. So for peeling potatoes, um, the recommendation is four minutes, but these ones I do for three. I'm just going to pop them in above my blade. The maximum is like 800 grams that you can put in. Um, I'm just going to put in just a few, just a, around my blade there. Now is the 600 grams of water. So remember, it just needs to be basically just to the top of the blade. Now I'm going on to my mode. So to go to your modes on your TM6, you just flick on the touch screen to your right and then just scroll down. Now Peeler was just recently added, so mine is right at the end there. It's always got an information screen to give you information about the mode that you're about to use, the do's and don'ts, like you know, how, how fast, like if you can't remember, it can't go past speed four, well, this is where it will remind you um, and, and give you in, important information. It's usually got, once you clear it, there's a little eye information symbol at the top of your screen. So you can always go back in and refresh yourself. So what I'm gonna do now is um, we've, it's set for four. I'm just gonna drop that down to three and we're gonna activate, we're gonna go to someone else. And when we come back, I'll show you them all peeled. Thank you, Mel. So we're going now across to Nadine, who's going to go through high heat uh, and show us, you know, how hot the TM6 can get and how to use high heat. Thanks, Nadine. So we've caramelised the onions already. You can see they're nicely, nicely caramelised. And we're going to now add in the... Um, balsamic vinegar. So we've got 20 grams of that going in. I thought I might run out, so I had another jar just in case. And uh, the good thing about the TM6 is the scales. So I like to activate the scales and weigh in small quantities. So it calls for an eighth of a teaspoon, but I'll just weigh in one gram because you've got the capability to weigh in one gram with the TM6. Then we stir it to combine.
and then we cook it for another three minutes. So over to you, Bernie. Thanks, Nadine. Those onions are great on top of a pizza. Yeah, they smell great and with a bit of feta, um, yep. they're perfect yep. on a pizza. Yep, wonderful. Hi, Bernie. Hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure I spotlighted myself. Uh, I get to show off a few modes all in one go uh, and only using two ingredients. So how special is that? I'm going to be showing blend mode, warm-up mode and pre-clean mode, not actually in that order. <laughs> so I, just like um, what Mel said, the way we get to our modes, we'll do it over here and then I'm going to show you something else on that one. So we've got our modes here. So warm-up mode is one that if you have your TAM6, you might not have used that much yet, or you might. I love warm-up mode. So we go on to warm-up mode. And then if we press the little eye up the top there, which you probably can't see, um, but there is a bunch of information on the screen now that tells you how to use warm-up mode. Uh, so I'm going to get our recipe started, what we're making. And just to let you know, I'm making a hot chocolate using milk and chocolate. So I've got dairy, milk, and chocolate there. You can use any kind of milk you want. I've used almond milk, oat milk, rice milk, whatever milk you like. Uh, and you can use whatever type of chocolate you like. You could also use a bit of cacao and a bit of um, a sweetener of your choice as well if you want to go super healthy. So we're going to put our temperature to um, 75 is how warm I want my milk. If you've got little kids, you can do it not so warm. You can skip the chocolate for this one as well and go um, just do yourself some frothy milk. So you can do up to six cups of milk uh, if you'd like to be making coffee for people. Um, but I've just realized I actually want to get go home and the first thing we need to do is grate our chocolate. So I'm just going to chuck a bunch of chocolate in there as much or as little as you like. I just used the end of the block that was in the pantry and we're going to grate that. So I'm going to skip the time. I'm going to go straight up to speed 10. And then when I can hear that it stopped um, kind of grazing, then I'll stop it. So it only took about six seconds. Uh, the more chocolate you put in or the less, the less it's going to take. That's why I decided to do it without putting a time in. Have a look at that. Lovely chocolate powder. My overhead light turned off. So back to warm up mode. Put it on our 75. The well, other way, I'm back with a cup of milk. And then we're just literally going to pop that on. Now, with warm up mode, it doesn't put a time on there for you. It takes as long as it takes to get to the temperature. So, what it's going to do is it's going to be working towards getting to 75. Any other time you're using your thermomix, you put a time in, you put a temperature in and a speed, and it's going to stop when the time stops. But in your mode, it's able to stop when it gets to the temperature that you want. Now, if you want to warm up something that's not just a liquid, so if you want to warm up something, say a bolognese sauce, then you're going to put your butterfly in, and that's going to help uh, keep things moving. Same as if you're doing a soup, uh, and making sure you put it on the right temperature uh, as well. It's not going to work that great for things like stews and casseroles and stuff like that that might already be quite soft and then you're going to end up, um, you know, getting it all pureed up. But it works great for soups, bolognese, sauces, uh, gravies, anything you might tuck in your freezer, defrost and then put in um, to warm up. Or if you've made a hollandaise sauce and you want to use it later, then you can pop it back on. Great to have your second bowl ready when you're doing using warm-up mode for things like that. You could be poaching your eggs using your blade cover. Your hollandaise sauce is sitting in your extra bowl already made and you've just got to warm it up and then your breakfast is, um, or your brunch or dinner or whatever you're having for is ready to go. Um, so that's warm-up mode in that one. It's doing it on speed two at the moment uh, and it will speed up a little bit as you go as well. I'm gonna change my screen over to be able to show you the screen of this um, TM6 here, uh, because I want to talk a little bit about Cookidoo 3.0. So for those of you who are kind of maybe a bit confused about what that is, uh, Cookidoo is our online recipe platform and that's where the guided recipes are. 
3.0 is the ability to personalize recipes, whether you're grabbing them from the recipe community online or putting your own in there. Uh, but there's one other thing no one's talked about yet, and this is my tip. Um, so personally, I have a lot of allergies and things I can't eat. Um, and so I do a lot of swapping and subbing in recipes, which means if I'm cooking a guided recipe from Cookie Do, in my family, I'm the only one that can cook that because they don't know what substitutes I've made. Or I'm forever yelling out, use the coconut aminos, not the soy, or use the gluten-free flour, not the plain flour, even though the recipe says that. So what you can actually do is you can go on and you can change and edit recipes that already exist on Cookadoo. So it's not just grab a recipe from the recipe community or from your mum's little um, recipe card, which is great. It's change up those cookie recipes to be what you want them to be so let me have let me show you a recipe i changed i'm just gonna change my screen move my camera i've got a webcam that i can move around to show you hold on until we've got a good view there we go all right so we go up here can everyone can you see my screen all right Thumbs up if you can. Thank you. Don't want to be blurry. All right. So my recipes, created recipes. Here's my created recipe. This is a few that I've grabbed off the recipe community. Some of our family favorites. This is one from Cookie Do. If I click on this, some of you may know this sticky sesame chicken recipe. Uh, a few things I changed in that recipe. I prefer to do it a different way around than the recipe. I found a way for the recipe to take um, 10 minutes off the time by changing the order I do it in and changing the way that I cook the chicken, which works better for our family. Um, but I've also changed some of the ingredients. So where it used to say uh, soy sauce, I've now, if you can see that, it says coconut amino, which is my soy sauce replacement of choice. Um, and then, so if I go start cooking, you can go across like guided. It's still got all of the things you would have originally, but this step is actually further down the list normally, but I've made it step one. I want to coat my chicken and get it cooking and then get the rice and all that cooking. I love that we can have, choose, you can choose how you do it. So you can have all your ingredients up, um, up in one go and your scale. Or if I go out of that recipe and into my recipes, created recipes here, if I go into one of the ones that I've um, got off the recipe community here and then edited to suit myself. This is one I often get my children to cook for me, like if it's their turn to cook dinner. So what I've done is I've, when you get to somewhere where we're adding things, I've kept it adding one thing at a time so that they don't get confused about what they've added. So you really are able to personalize it to what you want. All right, let's have a look. I'll Get rid of my sugar container there and we'll see what we've done over here. So our milk is now warmed up and it has our chocolate in it. So that's step one. You've got your warmed up chocolate. The best way to have a, a hot chocolate is frothy, right? So let's get out of warm up mode, flick across, and now we're going to go blend mode. What's the benefit of blend mode? The benefit of blend mode is being able to flick your wrist and it takes it up slowly for you instead of having to sit there slowly getting it up to, to speed eight or nine that you want it. So I'm going to, I'm going to put, normally I'd put a minute, but I'm just going to put, you know, 40 seconds or something on there. And then you've got choices of how fast you go. So there's little indents in my circle here that you might not be able to see, but they are actually telling you what speed is going to be the top speed that blend mode goes. So I'm just going to go all the way around to eight. And it will go slowly. So I'm not sure if you can actually hear it because of the way I've got my sound set up. But it's doing this slowly. And then you hear it go up each step and blending our hot chocolate there. And now it's getting up again, just like if we were sitting there blending it. Up. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So I'll pull that out and then I'll show you pre-clean, which is one of my other favorite modes as well. So when you look nice, steaming hot chocolate that is lovely and frothy. And you get a bit more froth if you do it a bit longer, but you remember that was only ooh, half full when I poured it in. And now we've got a lovely hot chocolate with the froth on top. After you make your hot chocolate in the morning or warms up your, make your porridge or after you've done high heat, caramelized onions. Cleaning up is also a breeze with your TM6. So we pop over to our modes again. We're going to change it up to pre-clean mode. We've got options. So you go into your little eye and it gives you a bunch of different options. And it's a really easy to turn the dial. And it says dough mode, universal fat or caramel browning. Um, so depending on what you've done, um, you choose what um, level you put it on. Enough water just to cover your blade is all that's needed. You can choose a dash of vinegar or a dash of whatever um, detergent you like. Um, sometimes I even just don't put any in, I just put water in. And then it's just a turn of the dial. I'm just gonna do universal, um, because the milk cooks to the perfect temperature, doesn't burn to the bottom, so it doesn't take long to uh, clean. So that's pre-clean mode, blend mode, and warm up mode. Uh, lots of modes to keep you busy exploring uh, your TM6. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank Here you, Bernie. Here. Thank you very much. So, Kathy, are you ready for us to come back to you or who's ready? Let's see. All right, Duray, we might go Duray, then we'll go Kathy. So, uh, thanks, Bernie. Hi guys, sorry about that. I did actually have the onion mode there. I just missed it because I couldn't see the screen on my Thermomix. But I just want to show you guys the end result. So it looks like this. So it's a little bit more um, dense than normal. But once you've added the onion and tomato and you kind of put it into little lettuce boats, and I added some chili and some salt and that's, going to be my dinner and that's it it's really that, simple that looks so good where do you live again <laughs> <laughs> you know where I live there <laughs> <laughs> no it looks amazing thank you no all right worries. let's move over to uh who's ready hand up Mel let's go back to Mel and then we'll go to Kathy promise Kathy you're next okay so um Keila is done so this was um, three minutes. There was two of them that just needed just an extra little bit of um, peel, a little bit of peeling. So I just um, put them on for that extra minute. But they're beautifully peeled, um, slightly rough edges, great for baking. So if you want to know how to get your hands on one of these little babies, these little uh, blade cover peeler, they are available in the mix shop, and they are fifty seven ninety if you would like to purchase them outright. However, if you want to get one half price or even free, talk to your consultant about hosting a cooking experience because they, for the rest of this month, are on our host rewards catalogue. Um, so if you are keen to get one of those and not pay full price for it, have a chat with them um, and they will help you out. All right, that's me done. Thank you, Mel. Let's move to Kathy. Hi, I'm back. So I'm just going to show you my eggs, which I've cooked. Um, I think peeling them depends on freshness and a whole bunch of other things. Sometimes I put a little bit of vinegar in the cooking water um, and that helps. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not really, I don't know if there's any experts on how to make sure that the shell comes off easily, but um, different things work for me at different times. So I can't say I'm an expert. But I cook my eggs um, medium soft, and I'll just show you that. Um, can you see that? They just come out beautifully. Um, and even if I'm just going to mash them, I still cook them medium soft because I really like that soft sort of creamy yolk. Um, now, I've done my chicken. Can you see that? Yeah, it's great. Um, and what I forgot to mention is that when I'm poaching chicken, I always put in a teaspoon of my homemade veggie stock 
Um, if you've got a Thermomix and you're not making your own stock pastes, you've got to ask yourself why not. <laughs> um, I just make the veggie one because I've got a vegetarian daughter, but I find it gives lots of flavour to any meat dish that you're making anyway, so it's just very versatile. Um, but, you know, I've made the chicken one in the past. They're all great, but the veggie one is just, you know, multi-purpose and versatile for whatever you're cooking. Um, so I just put a teaspoon into the water, that the poaching water, and um, it just gives a little bit of extra flavour to the chicken as I'm poaching it. Um, so I put that on the hard boil mode and that took 18 minutes and that was three thigh fillets that I cooked and I cut each one into three pieces just to make sure that they were kind of cooked through. Um, if you were cooking them whole, you might need to add a little bit of extra time, but you, you really just need to work out what you're doing and, and check for yourself. Don't assume that it's done. Um, just you know, check and you might need to add a little bit, bit of extra time. And then I'll just show you how easy it is. I've got some of the cooked mayonnaise, which is a really fantastic recipe on Cookie Do as well, which I make all the time. It lasts longer than the uncooked mayonnaise. Um, and I'm just going to throw in a couple of teaspoons into my chicken. And it's as easy as probably about eight seconds reverse. Speed, speed four. <laughs> and you end up with. Can you see that? Perfectly shredded um, cooked chicken for your sandwiches or your salad. Um, like it, it takes no time, as you just saw. Um, and you know, you've made your own mayonnaise, you've made your own chicken um, veggie stock. Um, can't get more homemade than that, apart from if I laid the the chicken, my, you know, the egg and the chicken myself. But um, not going to happen. <laughs> Thank you. That's great, Kathy. I love the um, shredded chicken idea and with homemade mayonnaise all the way. It's amazing. Um, where are we going now? Hands up. Who's next? Or is it me? Ah, Nadine, let's go to you. So I finished the caramelised onion and this is how um, chunky is. For me, I don't like it that chunky on my pizza. So I've chopped it up, four seconds, speed 10, and you can get a, a nice chopped um, caramelized onion as well. So you've got half, half, or you can do the whole lot. So the options there, as um, Bev mentioned earlier, you can put that on your pizza, and you've now got the option to put that on the pizza and put it in the pizza oven that's available in the mix shop as well. So thank you, Beth. Over to you. My turn. Okay. All right. So the bread is baked. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's so crunchy and fresh. The smell. And guess what? It's my turn to have the crust. Jeff got the crust the other night. Now, I've also got here um, some butter. I've always got butter in the freezer. Um, and I also buy cream when it's reduced. This has come out of the freezer ready to be making butter. So uh, freshly homemade butter on fresh homemade bread. You cannot get better than that. This is the sort of thing, things you can do with the Thermomix, whether you have one or you don't, um, or whether you do and you're not doing this level of cooking, jump onto classes more often, watch people do things, experiment, try things, make a goal to try something new every day, maybe two things, uh, because the Thermomix is up for it. You know, if you're up for it, you can do almost anything in your Thermomix. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to just lift up my computer and show you. I have got another bowl of yogurt in here. It's, it's in there cooking and it's going to be ready at quarter past six in the morning. 
Yep, I've got an early start tomorrow. That's the way I planned it, but that's okay. I get up that time most days. So uh, that beautiful white thermoserva, uh, like Mel was saying, is, a, is on our host reward as well. I looked up and you can't actually buy them, but you can get them through hosting. Hosting is a good thing to do. That's another way of learning a lot more about your Thermomix because you'll have one of us come to you or we do online, more so these days, uh, and, and pick through a whole range of recipes that you might like to see. Or you can suggest, can we do this or do that? So hosting is an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for others to discover the Thermomix and also an opportunity for you to get some amazing host rewards and you can host as often as you like, which is great. All right, finally, for me, uh, second finally, I mean, this is the beautiful bread tin, uh, gift with purchase starting uh, yesterday, I think. Beautiful, heavy duty, nice deep tin. You can make beautiful bread. And what a better um, you know, reward to go with it is our, our mat. These two are a match in Baker's Heaven. Um, now, finally, you may or may not have heard, we have uh, on Valentine's Day, the 14th, the ability for a Thermomix owner that has a lesser model than the TM6 to trade up. There's a deal, there's an offer that you can trade up your Thermomix and start using the latest model that's got all the technology. TM5 is great, but the technology isn't quite the same and there's so many limitations. It's a great machine, uh, but the TM6 is, is, has gone a whole lot further and is continuing to evolve. We're getting more and more modes. So consider trade up. Um, what will happen to the TM5s? Um, they're going to be refurbished and uh, serviced. And the majority of them, if they're in good working order, will go out to charities. So they'll be donated by the company. So that's kind of a good feeling um, as well. I've seen three TM5s go out and I've personally delivered them to different charities. Uh, and, you know, they're made, used for cooking for the homeless or, um, you know, different organisations where people are in recovery situations. Thermomixes are going to be amazing for them to use. So that's the potential of what may happen with your TM5. But you move up to the TM6 and you learn and discover all the things that we've gone through tonight. So thank you. I think, what time is it? I think we're just about on time. Unless, Bernie, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Are we good? I think we'll finish up. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed our class. It's been great having you on board. Uh, tomorrow we will be, um, I'll be sending an email with the recording. If you've got anyone in your world that might like to discover the TM6, please, please feel free to send on this recording so that they can discover like all of us have. Um, I have a question. Yep, what's our question? Oh, somebody said they want to ask questions. Oh, please do. Um, is your second bowl black? Uh, is your no. second bowl black? Um, what's that mean? I don't know. I'm not sure what it means. All the bowls are silver with black handles. Um, they're all the same. The TM5 bowl can't be used on the six and the six bowl can't be used on the five. They're not interchangeable. But yeah, they're all, they all look the same basically, except the TM6 bowl has sensors under it that allow it to go up to a much higher heat, 160 versus about 115, 120. So I'm not sure if that answered your question. You can come off mute if you want to ask the question, if that wasn't the answer uh, that you're after. No, maybe not. Anyway, I just, uh, okay, must be, oh, I see. Right, okay. No, it's not black and it could be a reflection. It's Probably just silver. Shadow. Yeah, it could be a shadow, silver, same old bowl. But the Varoma lid is black. When you get a TM6, you'll get a black Varoma lid and you'll also get a black measure cup, excuse me, a measure cup that doesn't fall out. How good is that? That's really exciting. That was that brought the house down when this Thermomix was released. All right, I'd love to thank all the consultants that came on tonight and their wonderful way of presenting and uh, highlighting the amazing features of the six. 
So thank you to everyone. And thank you guys for being uh, a great audience tonight. Um, we love having people come along and be able to share and inspire. So um, yeah, that's it for tonight. And uh, I'll get all the recipes to you in an email plus the recording uh, tomorrow sometime. And you know we welcome you to our next class, which we haven't put in place yet, but we will soon. Uh, Easter's coming up, so maybe it'll be a bit of an Easter class dealing with some chocolate, which would be good, uh, and a few other uh, salads and nice dishes. All right, thank you, everyone, and um, we've enjoyed having you in our kitchens. Thanks. If anyone has questions, you please feel free to ask them. I don't want to, you to go away wondering something. Um, but connect with your consultant about any more information about Trade Up. Uh, because it's a really fun, I think it's going to be a great thing to do to discover uh, the TM6 is like a big wow. Thanks, everybody. Any questions? No, I think we're good. All right, I will stop the recording. Um,